Hi guys, today's the day you're really getting the videos today. Um, so I'm doing a really nice quick dinner here and I'm using very, I'm using as much garden as I can and, and I'm using some leftovers. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, this recipe is going to be using, um, we had made something a few weeks ago, if you remember correctly, with angel hair pasta and all I did was put what was left over in the freezer and it's all defrosted, so I'm defrosted now. And so I don't have to do anything except put it in here and I don't have to boil anymore. So again, we don't waste anything. This one in the freezer, it freezes wonderfully and it's in great shape. Um, what I've started out here with, and I'll show you what I've got here that's on the stove right now. What I started out with is um, a, a red pepper that came from my friend Steve Briganti's um, garden and some onions and just a bunch of butter. That's how I'm starting this out right now. And it's just simmering and sauteing out. Oops, I almost dropped, of course, the camera into the pan because, you know, that's how cool I am sometimes. So anyways, there you go. If there, if that's that's what's simmering out. And it's just got a couple more minutes because I wanted a little bit al dente. I don't want them to be mushy or anything. So I'm just going to check one of these onions. Mm -hmm. A little bit left to go. In the meantime, while we are letting that cook down, um, I have decided that I want to put some of my tomatoes in there. I have red tomatoes, the regular cherry tomatoes, and I have what's called sun and gold, which are the um, yellow and orange ones, and my god, are they amazing. So what I'm going to do with these guys, and I'll have to push back the camera for a second to do it, is I just want to cut them in half quickly so that I will be able to just pop them right into the recipe. Goodness gracious, what is going on with this thing right now? I'm having a hard time keeping it here. I don't understand what's going on. Anyways, can you move it back a little bit? That could be what's going on. There. Oh, I wish Tim was taping for me. This is not working out. Anyways, okay, so back here. All right, so all I'm going to do is just slice them down. I've washed them because they were in the garden, and all I'm just going to do is slice them quickly down the middle. And I'm going to put these in pretty much last minute, but I want them to be prepared. So as you can see, just cutting them right in half. See, just popping them in there. I'm going to make a little pile of them. There we are. I did equal parts of just the traditional cherry tomatoes and um, the sun and gold because the sun and gold are really super sweet. They're actually like the kind of, if I can use the, the uh, comparison, they're like the chocolate of, of um, uh, tomatoes. They are so sweet. They're crazy ridiculous sweet and I can smell that this is awful close over here. Okay, I've only got a couple more to cut. These will go on top. They're going to be so pretty. Um, if I had more time, I would do what Jasmine did, and she would roasted her peppers and everything, and then she did what she wanted with them afterwards. But I'm not. I don't have that much time right now. Tim just got back from picking berries, and so I'm gonna um, over here. As you know, I've done this like a million times already. I'm gonna do what I always do, which is here we go. Just throw a bunch of this garlic on here. I always do just kind of a thing like that. So what's going to my pan next is, um, and then this is something my mother introduced me to. They're called al, al frescos, and they are all natural. There's this one. There's a lot of different flavors. This one's a sun-dried tomato one, which is why I was doing this. Um, but it's actually chicken sausage, and um, there's no artificial flavors or anything in it. They're already pre-cooked, so I basically just have to cut them up and throw them in, kind of like a kielbasa. Only a kibasa, I cook a little longer. These don't need to be, these just pretty much need to touch the heat just to, to kind of, so I'm just going to give them like these little, whoops, up here's my pan, there you go. Just going to give them like these little rounds. Um, my mother did this lunch for lunch one day and I was just over the top with what this tasted like. And I wanted to make sure that the next time I made it, because I came home and I made it here and I was like, ooh, I really like this. So the next, I vowed that the next time I made them, I was going to share them with you guys because it's a really quick meal. Um, it's not all homemade because the Alfredo sauce I'm going to use is not a homemade one today. I haven't had time to do that, nor has Sunny been here. So I'm going to use the Bertoli that I tend to like a lot, which I'll show it in a minute. I'll show it to you. 
I just want to quickly cut these up in rounds because um, as you can see the uh, onions and the peppers which you were just listening to sizzling are really all ready for the next ingredients. So I just want to get these cut up quickly in little rounds and throw them in there. Put them in the pan, there we go. And I basically just want to warm it up because they're really fully cooked. Look at that, you can see the sun-dried tomatoes inside them. I cut that one. Look at the sun-dried tomato in there. Isn't that neat? Oops, the lighting isn't all that great for you to see it. There you go, the sun-dried tomato. Um, so, but there's different flavored ones for sure. And uh, I have used a couple of the different flavors. And uh, it's kind of a neat item, actually. I was like, oh, a different flavor, a different thing. And, you know, I'm trying to do as much chicken and anything non-beef um, for me right now. I'm trying to stay with chicken or um, uh, seafood of any sort because all that's so much better for me right now. So there you go. So that's what's going on in our pan next. I'm going to just get it up to snuff to warm. It's only going to be in here a few minutes. On the bottom of this is still butter, and I feel like it's sticking a little, so I'm going to add just a smidge more. There we go. Yeah, just to keep it off from, I don't want it to um, stick. Yeah, we can bring you over a little bit closer now because we're not using that center anymore. There you go. And as you can see, I'm just kind of letting the butter brown. Um, brown the sausage, the sun-dried sausage, the al fresco sausage a little bit, and I'm just bringing it up to heat because they are already cooked. It's really pretty already, isn't it? I think what I'm going to do is move these over here so I can get you even a little bit closer to the pan. There. That gives you a pretty good bird's eye view right there. All right. I'm going to let that cook just a little bit. Like I said, if I had more time, I would have taken the time to um, roast my veggies like we did, you know, last month when we were roasting veggies and stuff that were in the garden. That would have given them a, a bit more of an intense flavor. I would have used either balsamic vinaigrette or EVOEO or something to, you know, give them a little bit of a snap, but didn't have that time, so I just threw them in here and fried them up with butter. Okay? So next, we're really just going to toss the the tomatoes in next just to get them a little up to up to warmth because you don't really want to cook tomatoes down very much because they will get mushy. So I'm just trying to get those a little bit warm because I am ready to add the last two ingredients to our meal. This is going to be a one pan meal by the way. I meant to mention that earlier. A one pan meal. I don't need to do anything else. I don't need to... Don't you love my cast iron? These were my mom's. She cooked us many, many, many meals with these cast iron pans when I was a child. And uh, yeah, cooking in them is such a pleasure for me. She doesn't cook in the volume that she did, so she gave them to me after she left the farm. She just handed them pretty much all over to me, and uh, I think I've got all of them, actually. And uh, yeah, and I use them all the time. So there you go. We've made that. We don't want those tomatoes to pop. So now I'm just going to use my spaghetti that was already cooked that's been in the freezer and I'm just gonna throw some in there and I'm kind of being random with how much I'm putting in there because I don't know yet you know the the um, uh, pasta to sauce ratio and then I'm going to use because I really 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 do love this portoli I have to say I do I also like to use the uh, Newman's stuff. Anything to do with Paul Newman's, any of his cooking, I love those as well. And the thing about Newman's I like even more is that all the money goes to charity. So, But but I really love the Bertoli flavor. Always have. Okay, so we're just going to toss this in and see how well coated it is. And if we need any more pasta, we will. But we don't want it to be dry. I love my pasta to be wet. I'm sorry, I'm not a girl that likes to sit down to a plate and have pasta with just a smidge of 
sauce on it at all and like oh I hate it when spaghetti so I like it. I like having extra on the side I like it to be wet I don't I'm just not a, I'm not a dry sandwich person I know I've said that to you before as we've been cooking as I do not like a dry anything I like I just like it to be wet and, and of course Tim's Alfredo's we know how good that is because he cooked that for you already that is like super uber good all right I think I've gotten as much as I can out of that can there we go and let's turn it down because we certainly don't need any heat to it now everything's up to heat and everything is right we're just trying to put some warmth on that that sauce now so that's still a little wet that's more sauce than it is but it's still runny enough so I'm going to add a, another handful of this pasta and work it through a little bit but as you know, I don't want it to be dry, so I'm not gonna not gonna add any more. I want that messiness on my plate. What I'm gonna do with what's left of the pasta, since it was already frozen once, I'm actually gonna make a pasta because there's so many um, spaghetti pasta salad recipes. So there's not, I mean, there's enough for a small salad for Tim and I in here tomorrow. So that's what I'm going to do with that so that it doesn't waste. I'm going to use every bit of that because when I did it, I cooked a box thinking it was going to be sm small because remember there were those. Do you remember when I cooked this? Hold on. I'll cook it for you. I cooked one of these and they're called half length angel hair pastas and we did it at like, I don't know, about a month ago. Remember? And then I was like, oh, that can't possibly be a lot. And then it was a whole ton. And we only used half of it. So um, I'm still working on it. And so tomorrow is going to have like some sort of cold salad. So maybe I'll get back to you with a cold salad on that pasta if I can find a good recipe. And that's it. There you are. Beautiful. Look at the color of that. Look at the texture. Look how beautiful it is. That is a nice one pan quick dinner using, using pasta that was already boiled, using veggies from the garden, a little butter, bada bing, bada boom. You got a great one pan thing. The only change I would have made if I was um, thinking about, you know, not running to a store is that I would have um, made my um, uh, Alfredo sauce homemade, but we haven't done that together yet. And this Bertoli is really beautiful and it's really not that expensive. And to be honest with you as well, when I go shopping, I don't get one can and put it on uh, one jar and put it on the shelf. I get three. So, you know, I have a couple on hand for this and that's and, and this, you know, you saw how quick this meal was. This is as quick again. Remember when we were cooking and I'll go get a box to show you what we were trying to replace was. Hold on. We were trying to replace these kinds of meals by making them homemade. That's when we started cooking with that. That's why we made that. And so we're. You know, as long as you can get away from this that has all kinds of preservatives in it, none of the vegetables are real, they're just flakes. I mean, get out of that. Get into this. This was a quick one pan. You saw it took me, I don't know, 10 minutes maybe at the most to do this whole thing, and that's with all my crazy talking. So, you know, a one can of Bertoli or Paul Newman's or anybody, Alfredo sauce on your, your shelf so that you can do something quick like this. It's perfectly acceptable. Um, but I do want to I do want to learn how to make the Alfredo homemade someday and, sh and show you guys as well So I got to get sunny here someday to do that. So there you go a nice one again a nice one pan meal quick meal, but nutritious and it's a lot of it's just right out of your garden So I don't know what to call this if you want to call it Because um, I really don't have a name for it We can call it uh, chicken sausage Alfredo Let's call it that, chicken sausage alfredo, because it's, it's not a recipe written down anywhere. It's just something I threw together. Again, I got it from my mom anyways, to begin with. That's, the ideas came from her. All right, nice to talk to you again. Uh, we'll see what we can conjure up tomorrow. I was really thinking of doing uh, beer bread, because in the coronavirus, the one of the things you couldn't find was flour, and you couldn't find yeast to make real bread. So I got a beer bread recipe here. I'm really itching to try, so maybe we can do that tomorrow. Okay, thanks. Bye.